Here on Maker's Muse, I always say it's my aim to empower creativity through technology. And today I had one of the most technologically advanced machines I've ever had in the Maker's Muse studio. <laughs> That's right, today I'm going to try using a sewing machine to make this hoodie. I love learning new things, it's going to be fun, I have no idea how it's going to go, but let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Maker's Muse. So why a sewing machine? Well, sewing is one of those skills that I've always wanted to learn and I do firmly believe that people should pick up a new skill on a regular basis or at least just try something new because you never know what you might enjoy. And for me, sewing has always been like that dark art of working with flexible materials, you know, fabric to make three-dimensional objects. It's almost the complete opposite of what I usually do with CAD and 3D printing in rigid plastic, which is why it's just so interesting to me, but so foreign as well, because I like to get my machines to do the work for me, but at least in this circumstance, I still have to do a lot of the manual work to feed this machine and make it work. And I don't really know what I'm doing. I've done a few projects in the past with a sewing machine, but yeah, I'm a complete newbie, so do not follow this video expecting a full detailed tutorial from an expert because I'm not. The purpose is really to show you that if I can do this, then you can do it too. And there's nothing stopping you. Sewing is a skill that should be accessible and tried by anyone. You can make amazing things with sewing machines. And I'm going to try today to make this pattern. But you might be wondering where this machine came from. Well, this was only $99 from Aldi here in Australia. Like I've shown them, they sell 3D printers for cheap. They had a special with this sewing machine and it's a Janome Sterling, which is an Aldi's like rebrand of it. But what I understand, it's the same model as many uh, rebrand ones around the world. It's a good solid little unit with some basic settings, nothing fancy, but $99 Australian is next to nothing. And I've done some tests on it with some fabric, some fairly thick stuff as well, this is fleece, and uh, it seems to handle it pretty well. It gets stuck sometimes, you sort of just push it through, hasn't broken, so yeah, there's no real uh, barrier to entry with learning to sew. As with every new skill, you need to do a little bit of learning before you dive in, so I highly recommend this five-day beginner's sewing course by Anika at Made to Sew, links in the video description. She is fantastic definitely helped me learn and get up to speed quickly. And also I really like reading older books on crafts and especially sewing because it's been around for so long. So I picked up this fantastic book from the 60s, Macal's Sewing in Color. And it shows you how to read a pattern, which is very, very useful, but also talks about the effect of fabrics and colors and patterns and how that can affect form. And it's really, really interesting to read. I love picking up older books like this. For figures with a prominent derriere, look for flowing lines, especially those which flow at the back. Hip length boxy jackets will help. Box pleated shirts, flared skirts, and shared waistlines are effective. Fill in the hollow above the derriere with blousing, such as a sash or a flying panel. Um, yes, let's continue. But where should you start? Well, if you're a beginner like me, you should start with a pattern. So the pattern is like the plans for any sort of DIY project. And I was overwhelmed by how many patterns are available. Just, this is a simplicity pattern. There's so many different companies and there's just books <laughs> of patterns. And I decided to go with this hoodie scarf combo because it looked fairly simple for my meager skills. And the neat thing about patterns is they actually show how much fabric you need at the back. Uh, although this is in yards because it's an American company. So I did have to convert to meters on the fly to get the amount of fabric I needed. But because this is a very simple uh, project, you don't need too much. So I'll show you what I've got. I wanted this hoodie scarf to be nice, warm and cozy. So I went with fleece, which is what was recommended. I want this lovely dark purple and black color combination. And for the inside of the hood, I went with this really weird fluffy material. It's fluffy on both sides. It's really warm, but that ended up being very difficult to work with as you'll soon see. The thing that first struck me about patterns is just how thin they are. This is the thinnest of the thinnest paper I have ever come across. And the entire thing is in that little envelope. So this is just part of it. And you can see already, like, it doesn't fit into frame. Um, 
how big this is. And this paper is so incredibly fragile. <laughs> so much respect for anyone following a pattern with this sort of thing. It's, uh, it's delicate and needs to be folded back in a specific way and it all fitted into that envelope somehow. I have no idea how, it's probably never going back in, but it did. So I'm gonna have to cut the rest of these patterns out and then trace the pattern onto my fabric and then cut the fabric out, being very careful to keep in mind the orientation of the fabric, including the, the right and the wrong side. So the wrong side is the side you don't wanna see and the right side is the side that faces out when the garment's done. Um, and it's very easy to mix them up. Now good practice would be to pin the pattern to the fabric, but this fabric and the fleece is so thick and the pattern's so simple that I did forgo that. I have this really neat chalk pen that I picked up from Spotlight that leaves this really nice white line that does wash off easily. And I also picked up this rotary cutter when I got the sewing machine from Aldi and this cutting mat. And man, I love this thing. It cuts materials so well, even the thicker fleece, and it does a really good job. And the next challenge was trying to get the fleece flat. This is a 220 centimeter wide bolt. So I never really considered how much room you need to actually do this and put the pattern on. But because the scarf component is so simple, it's just a rectangle, I ended up just measuring the dimensions of the pattern and then using my wide metal ruler to trace it onto the fleece instead of trying to follow along the very thin paper. And with all the pieces cut out, we have two halves of the outside of the hoodie. We have the two parts for the scarf, and then we have the two inside parts for the hoodie liner. As you can see, they're completely fluffy, and they made a huge mess. Now you need to learn how to thread a sewing machine. So look, I'll recommend that video again that I did mention at the start. Uh, that did help me learn how to thread a machine, but they do come with good instructions. Each one's a little bit different but really it's not too difficult to learn. You get the hang of it pretty quickly. The thing about getting it through the eye of the needle is I do use a little helper, which is like a little thin bit of wire that helps pull the thread through the eye of the needle. Uh, that helps me a lot. And then in terms of the bobbin, getting that in does take a little bit of practice. It's a little bit finicky, but then you wind the machine forwards and it will go through and catch the thread from the bobbin. It's like black magic. Then you just tuck it under the foot, put the covers in place and you're good to go. And I'll be honest, this is where I deviate from the script a little bit because normally you would pin the two halves together to sew them, but I found with this really thick plush fabric that pins just didn't work that great. So I got these clips on recommendation from a friend they usually use for quilting. And I have to say they are magical. They hold this fabric in place really well and you just remove them as you move forward sewing and it's really, really easy to use. All right, this is the bit where I attempt to sew this ridiculously fluffy material <laughs> uh, with my meager sewing skills. So um, children and more experienced of you might want to look away because it calls for a six millimeter gap. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm gonna give it a shot, Let's see how it goes. Well, hopefully that's the hardest thing to do because the fleece should be easier than that. And look at all this mess. Look at it. This is, it's everywhere. It's all over the floor. Okay, now I need to sew the two halves of the scarf together and this should be a lot easier because it's just a straight line and it's the fleece. Oh, That'll do. <laughs> Next is the outside of the hood, remembering where the right and wrong sides are. And now we just need to sew the liner into the inside of the hoodie. Simple, right? Well, no. Stop right there, Buster. This can get confusing. You see, we need to make sure that the inside and outside turn inside out correctly when the garment's complete. And this was wrong. So, how I solved this in my head, because I found this quite challenging, was to actually use the clips to join it in the correct orientation how I would want it, and then turn it inside out, and then re-clip it for sewing. Now I understand this sounds insane, and it kind of is a little bit, but I do struggle with figuring out the correct orientation when making this. It can get confusing, and this is just how I found it best for me to get it in the correct orientation for sewing. You'll notice at this point that we're starting to really build up our layers, and this is where I really regretted using that weird fluffy material because it would move differently to the fleece and it was hard to keep them both lined up as I sewed, but they did get there in the end and, you know, after all my effort planning, 
I was really happy to see that turning the hoodie inside out resulted in the correct shape. The seams are hidden inside, the lining was in the inside, and the fleece was on the outside. Now is the big task of attaching the hood to the scarf components, and this is a really big job. I had to do this and then fold it over to encapsulate the hood inside so that you have to be really careful that you weren't going to sew the hood into the wrong area and then sew this whole sausage together. And we're quickly approaching the finishing line. I got quite confident here sewing as quickly as I could till I got to the part where the hoodie is actually encapsulated. This is four layers of fabric and you can really hear it struggle. Okay, this is where we discover if this is a complete failure or a success. Uh, the hood is contained in it and it's all inside out. So I've got a gap here and now I need to try to turn it all inside out and then hand stitch that closed. Hopefully it works. We'll find out. You know what? I don't think that's too bad. This could could have been better. Not too bad for a first attempt though. <laughs> Especially with this material. <sighs> well, here it is. This is the completed hoodie scarf. Um, it is warm. It is nice and warm. So, right. I did make a few mistakes. Um, one of the things was the corner wasn't quite joined up here. So I did have to manually stitch that back up. Um, and the back bit where you seal it after turning it inside out could be better. It's a little bit rough, but no one really sees that. And finally, this material, I don't know what it is. I'll research later. It was in the, like, the, the end, bin ends thing where, like, you get scraps. Uh, it was a nightmare to work with. The fleece was one thing. Fleece is okay. Uh, but this stuff was something else. And I didn't get the, the direction right, actually. So, it's actually got a direction for the fluff. And um, I've got them back to front. So, one side goes up, one side goes down. It is what it is. Next time, if I was going to use this again, which I'm not going to, I'd just make sure that the pattern is oriented the right way so the fluff goes in the right direction. Uh, but I'm pretty stoked with this. So, yeah, there you go. Look, I don't know what I'm doing and I managed to do this. So, that means if you want to learn a new skill, you know, whether it's learning how to sew or it's 3D printing or anything, just give it a shot. I mean, this is a $99 sewing machine from Aldi and it sewed this quite heavy duty stuff. I mean, it was like four layers at one point and it punched through it, it didn't break. Low cost, you know, the materials were maybe 10, $15, the pattern was six. It's all pretty, pretty affordable really for a new learning experience. So thank you so much for watching. I am, I'm really having a blast with this and I will definitely be incorporating uh, sewing into something with 3D printing in future. I will definitely merge the two. And if you did enjoy this video, maybe consider subscribing. It's now night time. I've spent all day on this, but I feel like it's a big achievement for me and look forward to many other projects in future around empowering your creativity through technology, whether it's with a sewing machine or much more ridiculously advanced CNC equipment. Who knows? It's a ton of fun and I look forward to seeing you very shortly. Catch that, guys. Bye.